It was an infected USB stick just like this that unleashed the world's most infamous cyber attack. The manufacturing industry is the number one target of cyber threats. In this episode of Smarter Shop, we're gonna teach you simple, low-cost solutions to protect you from cyber attacks. My name is Ryan Kelly. I'm a manufacturing and supply chain technologist for AMT. My job is to get tech into industry faster. Today, we're solving manufacturing challenges with bite-sized solutions. Give us 10 minutes and we'll give you a smarter shop. I'm Ryan Kelly from AMT, joined by my co-host Adam Allard from Autodesk Research. Hey, Ryan. I uh, can't believe they renewed us for a season two, but... We must have done something right. Yeah, here we are in Chicago at MXD. MXD is a cyber resource for manufacturers, and did you know that the manufacturing industry is the target for 25% of ransomware attacks? It's a big deal. We're actually joined by Laura Alan, who is the Senior Director of Cybersecurity here at MXD. Tell us a little bit about where we are. It's a pretty cool place. It is. MXD is one of the 16 manufacturing innovation institutes that are funded through the Department of Defense, Department of Commerce, and Department of Energy. So MXD stands for Manufacturing Times Digital. And our core mission is to help manufacturers with their digital transformations so that they can take advantage of Industry 4.0, connectivity, and data to help their manufacturing operations. In 2019, we were designated as the National Center for Cybersecurity and Manufacturing. So we're the only institute with dual designation. And as manufacturers connect their operations together to take advantage of data to improve efficiencies and visibility, we also want to help them stay secure. Well, one thing I know that you've created is this uh, playbook for the CMMC 2.0 Level 1. I actually brought my own copy here so that you could sign it for me later. CMMC is important for any manufacturer that wants to pursue defense work. That is correct. The CMMC will be future requirements for manufacturers who participate in defense contracts. However, Level 1 is a baseline set of requirements. Um, cybersecurity techniques will demonstrate today that are appropriate for all manufacturers who wish to secure their operations. So some of the best practices that are laid out in CMMC1 are actually good for small to medium-sized job shops as well? Exactly. Excellent. Let's go check it out. Wait! Okay. Gotta get you signed in first. Okay. All right. Thanks, Laura. So physical security is one of the first elements of authorized access. So I see you have turnstiles. Absolutely. Turnstiles ensures that we have one scan per person. So if I scan in though, and Ryan, you follow me. Nice, Ryan. So the turnstile detects the tailgater. Okay. All right, now go back and do it the right way. That's how you do it. Adam, you do something similar at the Autodesk Technology Centers, don't you? Yeah, we do, actually. We have three levels of user access control at the shop. So the first one is the front door, much like we see here with the turnstiles. And the second one is access to the shop floor. Now, to get that, you have to do online safety training and then an on-site safety orientation with our eh &S team. The third level is actually to get into the workshops that you're training on. That's a whole other level of machine training and safety training. And once you hit that box, then you can get into the shops. What about here, Laura? Will this badge get me anywhere? No, actually, in order to get on the plant floor, you'll need to scan in again, and we'll see other examples of where you have perimeter control. So I, I see that you've got great security here on the on the front doors, but I know that when I visit some facilities, especially in California where the weather gets pretty warm, get registered at the front door where there's a good system, but then when you walk in and they've got all the roll-up doors open, I assume that this is a protocol. Yeah, that's correct. It's important that manufacturers know their perimeters and that they have mechanisms to protect those perimeters. 
Physical security like kiosks is one area, but you can also use things like motion sensors and cameras or other types of detection mechanisms, but it's still important to understand your physical security and where you want to protect people, only authorized people coming in and out. Nice. Is that in the playbook, Laura? Yes, it is. What's the Wi-Fi password? A try MXD 2020 for is that, is that Is that gonna work? No, that, that's pretty good, but not quite. So what are you attempting to do? I just wanted to download an app. Okay, go ahead. I can't even log into this computer. Of course you can't, which is one of the protections because you're not authorized to log in to the network. But I'm gonna invite Eric, one of our senior integration engineers to help you. He's authorized to log into the network. Hey, Eric. Hey, Ryan. Hey, Adam, pleasure to meet you guys. So I heard you guys wanted to install an app. I'll walk you guys through a process. First, I have to log in. We'll get the app installed. It's blocking me. That's because we follow something called RBAC, which is role-based access control. So even though I have access to log into my user account, I don't have the elevated admin rights to download an app on this computer. I was interested for a while, so what if I want to plug an ethernet to my own laptop? Go ahead, give it a try. I can't even get on the internet. And I'll let Laura tell you why. So we stopped you. Uh, this is an important part of access and authentication. Like we have physical security. We also have mechanisms to assure that unauthorized software and hardware can't connect up into our networks and our systems with inside our plant. This is a part of the operating system, so there's nothing special here. You can set this up as a, a part of your Windows profile to limit the ability for non-authorized equipment, non-authorized users. So you're saying these capabilities are, are available on most PCs? Absolutely, as a part of the Windows operating system. This is IT equipment and networks, but we know that a lot of operations technology also has network connectivity. So let's go talk to Eric and see how we do the protections for something like a piece of operations technology. Terrific, good, all right. So Eric, it looks like you've got a process simulated here. Absolutely, Ryan. So this is our cyber process testbed. Here we show the last three spokes of the NIST cybersecurity wheel, where we talk about detection, response, and recovery. Here we're emulating a water purification process. On the right side, we have a dirty, unfiltered water tank. In the middle, we have a water filter. In the left side, we have a clean filter tank. And then down here, we have a use case tank. So that could be a municipality, could be a manufacturing process, or could be a machine using up that resource. So what we try to show here is, how do you detect, respond, and recover from a cyber attack to your processes? Well, if I was a cyber criminal, I'd probably go after the PLCs, Eric. Absolutely. So not only do I have our PLC in a locked enclosure, but we also have it protected on the network side. So we have two forms of detection here when we're talking about hacking. We have network intrusion detection system and physical detection systems of our hardware. So we have sensors for flow controls and control systems in place. But on the network side, we're using something called a network sniffer, which is actually looking at our network traffic and popping up any abnormalities that, of network traffic that go through there and alerting us. But when talking about our PLC and our network traffic, I could see what version of my PLC I'm running. And if I can see it, our bad actor can. So I'm gonna put my bad actor hat on right now and go into our network and try to connect to it. These principles that you're showing us here, are these all found in the playbook? Absolutely. So all these principles from the NIST cybersecurity wheel, the CMMC are all covered within our playbook. Terrific. So here I just tried accessing our uh, PLC and I was denied because I didn't have my credentials in there. But let's say I didn't have my PLC password protected and I was able to get in. I would be able to manipulate our water system and go from a clean water tank and introduce a colorant or dirty water into our filtered system. For any job shop that could be uh, manipulating a manufacturing process, could be actually manipulating the product itself. Machine tools. Machine tools, everything. Okay. So the last two spokes are response and recovery from something like this. So how do I respond to an attack? The having the forethought of when, not if this happens. So we have an action team in place that's trained on how to move on to the recovery stages. We take the system off of the network to prevent any more IP loss. And then we also contact the authorities, uh, aka the FBI, because it is a criminal act in nature. So when recovering, it's also having that forethought and pre-programming into your control systems automated recovery methods so you can bring your systems quickly online without having a lot of downtime. It's great to have good practices in place for when these things come up because like a machine tool breaking or tool breaking, these things will happen in the shop. Absolutely. But wait, there's more. Our trip to MXD was so good, we needed to create part two. In this episode, we show you how to protect your machines and computers from malicious software, plus the benefits of multi-factor authentication, which is built into Windows. You won't want to miss these free, low-cost, and easy solutions.